Hi guys, Good Girl Fair with a video on using the Steam lobby system. It's part of the Fish Networking series, however this time we'll not see a lot of Fishnet. In part 2 we'll see it again. Ok, so this time we'll do the basics of creating a Steam lobby and joining it. Before I show you how it all works, I will list the prerequisites. I use Heathen Steamworks Complete to simplify the whole Steam API. Can you do all of it without it? Probably you can. However, this kit simplifies the work a lot. It contains good examples and documentation, and it will reduce your effort significantly. You can try the free version first, however I don't think it contains the lobby manager classes. Also note that this asset is currently part of the 2023 New Year's sale. In order to fully test the Steam lobby code, you do need two Steam accounts. One for each computer where you want to run Unity with the test project. Yes, you can run it on one machine, but you will not be able to test all scenarios that way. You cannot run two instances with different Steam accounts on one machine and be able to create AND join a lobby. It's easy to create another Steam account and use it for testing. The Steamworks documentation also recommends doing this. There's an alternative to this. Package your game using Steamworks and deploy it to some beta testers. I've already done this to do some testing and it works great. I will show in an upcoming video how to do this step by step. Ok, let's start with the scenes I have set up. For now we have two scenes. A bootstrap scene which sets up the basics. The Steamworks behavior. This is part of the Heathen Steam setup and uses Steam settings containing your Steam app ID. The Fishnet Network Manager. It uses the same setup I used in the previous video. We will not need it for this episode, but we will need it once we start the game at the end of the lobby process. Both of these are set to Do Not Destroy, so they will remain active when we load a new scene. I also added some code to automatically load the lobby scene after a few seconds. The lobby scene contains a series of buttons which allows you to either create a lobby or join someone else's lobby. Next to this it contains Heathen's lobby manager component and my own Steam lobby script which is based on one of Heathen's examples. The flow of the code in this scene is as follows. You can create a lobby which you automatically will join. This disables the Browse Lobbies button. Next you can indicate you are ready. If all players in the lobby are ready, then the Start Game button is enabled. What needs to happen when we start the game will be shown in the next episode. Alternatively, you can browse for lobbies. Pressing this button will disable the Create and Join Lobby button, then will fire a Search Lobby query using the lobby manager. When it finds one or more lobbies it will join the first lobby found. Typically in a game you will display all records of the lobbies in a list, then allow the player to select one and join that lobby. We'll skip that for now. Once you joined the lobby you can signal you are ready. Since you didn't create this lobby you will not be able to start the game. That's for the lobby owner to do. Ok, let's look at the lobby scene in more detail. The Create and Join Lobby button on Click Event does three things. Enable the I am ready button, disable the Browse Lobbies button, call the lobby manager create method which creates the Steam lobby for this Steam user with the create settings listed in that component. When we take a quick look at these settings, you see we gave the lobby a name, 4 slots, which equals 4 players, and we made it a public lobby for everyone to join. You can change this type to, for example, Steam Friends Only, if you want to hide it a bit. The I am ready button calls a method in my Steam lobby script to flag that a player is ready and pass that message to the lobby. We'll look at that code in a minute. The Start Game button currently doesn't do anything, we'll look at that in the next video. The Browse Lobbies button disables the Create and Join Lobby button and kicks off the lobby search in the Lobby Manager component. 
the lobby manager defines the search arguments for this Steam lobby search. It also has an event, EVT found, which gets called to report the search results. There are two other events in the lobby manager I use in the Steam lobby script. EVT enter success, which is called when somebody successfully enters the lobby. EVT data updated, which is called whenever any of the Steam lobby metadata is updated. This includes changes to the player is ready flag. OK, let's take a look at the Steam lobby code. In the start method, I added a listener event for EVT created, which gets called when a lobby is created, EVT user joined, which gets called when a user joins the lobby. The lobby created method shows some debug info and stores the created lobby in a variable for later use. The user joined event lists the current members of the lobby and sets the interactable status of the start game button. It's only set to true if this player is the owner of the lobby and all players signaled they are ready. The event enter success points to the enter lobby method, which stores the entered lobby and shows details for that lobby in a log. The player is ready method puts this player in the ready state, and if this player happens to be the owner, it checks if the start game button can be enabled. The event data uploaded points at the metadata updated method which again checks if the start game button can be enabled. I know, not the best piece of code, but for now it shows how it all works. The report search results gets called whenever a lobby search is called and has results to report. This is where I simply take the first lobby from the list and join that one. Now let's see how it works. I'm using a second computer to run the same Unity project under a different Steam account. First, I will show the main computer hosting the lobby. Now we will let the other computer create the lobby so we can join it. Ok, that's all for today. In the next video I will show the next step, which is starting the network game using Steam and Fishnet. Tune in soon for the next episode.